can you tell us about this game within a game kind of format that's going on with these three characters? It seems like, again, they're odds at different times. Well, it's funny because somebody asked me, so, you know, they had not seen the pilot. Like, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? I'm like, they're all. I like, they're not, it's not a show that starts with, hey, we're a crime fighting family. It's a show that spends the first eight episodes going, do I have to kill you or you? Like, which one of us is going to kill each other first? And, and that was the idea is, is like, if you actually had this conspiracy, if you actually had this system that had been in place for so long, and there's a big clue right in the middle of the pilot about how long they've been doing this that nobody's caught yet, that. Uh, it's a reference the charity makes, why they're able to do it, why their technology is just about 20 years ahead of everybody else, like why they're able to have this. And by the way, we have predictive policing now. Charity's character is not different than if Jessica Chastain's character in, in uh, Zero Dark Thirty broke bad. We have profilers, we have people who take data, analyze it, and try to predict terrorist activities and crime. We're just saying very bad people figured it out a long time ago and decide to use it to their own amusement. And that's so immoral and so horrible. We just want to kind of stay in that creepy factor of I don't know who I can trust. I don't know if I should be doing this. I'm I'm playing the game because I want to find out what happened to my ex-wife. But every time I win, am I helping them a little too much? I mean, all Alex can really do is help the innocents in the path of the game, which no one's done before. But Mr. Johnson has a speech in episode three where he explains why he believes the game is super important. And you should get the end of that speech and go, wow, yeah, that actually totally makes sense. I'm, I assumed he was the evil mastermind. I'm kind of on Team Johnson right now. You know, and so we really want to make sure you never know who to trust and who to believe. We also got a sense that there was a specific reason they chose Alex. Absolutely. It's not like it was a matter of chance that he fell into the situation. The question is who knows whether it was a matter of chance or not. You know that probably Cassandra chose Alex. Is she telling Mr. Johnson everything? Mr. Johnson telling Cassandra everything, the information? Because Mr. Johnson, you're going to see in the show, a lot of what he does is he goes out to dangerous places and he gets the information that she needs to figure out what the crimes are. So he's not a dude standing in the office in a suit. He's out doing cool stuff every week. How much is he telling her about what he knows? And so, yeah, he's... Every show, I think, is about the first five years or something or the last five years or something. And there's something that changed that made it that. Alex, the first player in decades with a moral sense, is that change. Whether it's the beginning of something or the end of something, it's kind of the theme of the show. How much do you have plotted out ahead of time versus playing by years? I'll admit, I, I can, and we can all, we've all watched a lot of television. You know the shows, you're like six episodes in and go, they are making this up. <laughs> uh, we know what the first season is. We absolutely know. I know who, who tells who what and when and, and when you find out what happened to Ginny and when Mr. Johnson figures out exactly what the hell is going on uh, and, and who tries to kill who. So, you know, we know that from the first season. And I know thematically because the show is about power, our relationship to power, our responsibilities with power, whether you can actually stop power or whether you can just contain it or control it or direct it. Um, so I know what the last scene of the show is. If you watch Leverage, I knew that scene at the end of Leverage, I knew we were doing that scene first season. And we drove the whole show five years to get to that last scene. There's a similar scene here. How we get there, whether we kind of go on a straight line, that, that might change. But I know what the ending of the show has to be to be the complete story the show should be. You had a question. Uh, in terms of payoff and mysteries, um, how, how long do you think you're going to be stringing I like to believe that each, I, and if you see my other stuff, to me every season's a novel. Like, so, okay, that was that year. New season, new goals, new stakes, new arrangement. The show itself kind of opens up like, because the pilot's very locked POV, you're only finding out as much as Alex is finding out. So as you find it, as he cracks the conspiracy open, you figure it out along with him. Once you understand how the conspiracy works, second year the show kind of opens up to the secret world of, oh my god, there's a whole power game around the world, we don't even know what's going on. And then third season opens it up bigger. So, so every season has a theme and a tone that is complete, and I, there's not a lot of hanging chads from one season to the next. I, I hate that, honestly. I, I don't, and also, you know if you come back for second season? You know, you don't know if that happens, so don't don't jerk your fans around. Give them like at least they watch one season on Hulu and they go, oh, that was awesome, and then they can go find the fan forums and bitch. But like, don't string them out so they have to come back next year. That's cheating. So I'm a huge fan of Leverage. Oh, that's and, nice. Thank uh, you. One of the great things about it, it has a lot of the same things you're talking about, but also has a lot of humor in it. 
Are we going to get some humor in the player also? Yeah, if you saw the pilot, you know there's one of the reasons we got Wesley is he can land a joke. And now he's terrifying, and a lot of times you're laughing at him, and it's like, <laughs> is he going to kill us? Okay, no. Um, but, you know, it has to be like, it's funny because a lot of these serials, it's like, take me seriously, look at how dark I am. For me, the joke somebody makes when they're in trouble is revelatory of character. The thing that Mr. Johnson finds amusing is often unnerving, but amusing. And, you know, he enjoys, Wesley enjoys playing characters. He plays a great fake character in this. He's undercover a lot in the show. And, and that's a chance for him to kind of flex his comedic chops. Phil's very funny, very funny guy. Charity's very, very funny. He's got a very dry sense of, you know, great dry British sense of humor. We're adding more characters in. You know, the, the ensemble is going to fill out as we go. As you get more elements of the conspiracy, more factors. You know, the, the conspiracy as it stands is not stable. And there's a lot of internal stuff going on. And you can be damn sure if the federal government knew this was going on, they would freak out. So there's a lot of secret keeping, there's a lot of cover-ups, there's a lot of active work in that, and a lot of gallows humor. So no, there's a lot of, there's genuinely funny stuff in every episode. You know, I was talking to John Fox, who was a producer on The Blacklist, who's a friend of mine, and he's like, and we were talking about, I just, much like leverage, I'm a pulp writer. I like, I like a show where I show up, I got a great self-contained story, and then if you watch all of them, they're all connected, but I just had a great time that week. Like X-Files. Like X-Files, classic X-Files was, maybe it's a monster, maybe it's a UFO, maybe it's a mystery, maybe it's witches. You just didn't know. And so that's what I'm trying to do with this show. Uh, and with and with John Zimmon and Patrick uh, Patrick Masson, who were two writers off the blacklist who came on the show with me, you know, we want you to not know what's going to happen this week. Like, I don't know how Castle does it. Like, a murder every week? I would be bored out of my mind, like, eight in. Like, we literally every week, like, I don't have any idea. And half the time, he's in Act 3 going, I'm still not sure what I'm trying to solve here yet. I just know the gamblers gave me this, and the fun of it is what he use, how he uses his resources, how he uses his approach to, to pull it apart. Um, so, go ahead. You're talking about the power, and you're talking about who's in charge. You're talking about the gamblers. So give us just a kind of quick rundown of the hierarchy that you know of right now. The fun, uh, the hierarchy is actually I can't really spoil because the fun of it is uh, the hierarchy is a shock. Um, but assume that Mr. Johnson is the first amongst equals, and assume that the gamblers. There's a line we cut from the pilot, unfortunately, and it'll show up in another episode where after Mr. Johnson explains a bit more about the structure, he goes, I'm sorry, did you think the house worked for the gamblers? No, 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 no. We control the gamblers. They're just not aware of it. And so, but the gamblers, however, are not idiots. They're aware of it. And so it's, a, it's, it's basically, imagine the most powerful people in the world run, betting on a game they love and kind of trapped in the game at the same time because of an agreement they made a while ago. They don't like it. The house hates them. The house has a bunch of psychopaths working for them they can't trust. And if anybody ever found out about any of it, the entire world order would fall apart. So, so essentially, there's no like, hey, here's a memo. You know, there's a lot of, anytime you walk in a room at any meeting with a conspiracy, odds are someone's coming out dead. You know, and that's part of the fun of Wesley's character is you're going to see him walking in that world of power and, and see exactly how terrifying he is to people and to a great degree how much they resent it. And, and, and whether this system is inherently stable. Like I said, every show is the beginning of something or the end of something. Is this the beginning of something new or the end of something old? All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs>